Welcome. This is Fashion, Art and Media. And today I'm really excited to have a guest who is one of the designers that are going to showcase at the Aberdeen Fashion Week. Please welcome, tell us your name and we'd like to know more about you. Hi, so I'm Jade. Um, I am the designer of Jade Elizabeth. Uh, I'm currently a student at Grace School of Arts. However, I am graduating in like a month's time. <laughs> so, wow. oh, yeah, <laughs> preparing. Yeah. That going? It's, it's scary, really scary. But I, you know, creating this little brand for myself has been what sort of pushed me forward and made me realize that I'm ready to go off and do these things. You know, I don't need to uni anymore. It's helped me get to this point. So, Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, when did you decide you wanted to be a fashion designer? That was an interesting one because I suppose I, it was quite recent. Um, I started uni four years ago mm. and I think it wasn't up until, I think it must have been the end of my second year of communication design that I realised actually my work is very pattern design oriented mm -hmm. and the lecturers had said to me okay your work is very pattern design oriented how can you apply this to design how how do you think you could apply your work mm -hmm. and it didn't really occur to me that I could apply my pattern designs onto things such as products up until a little bit later maybe third year ish all right so, it was about third year that I went, do you know what? I could apply these to products. I could apply my designs to fabrics, to the clothing, to things like that. So I ended up looking into it quite a bit more. And it, it, it was weird because everything kind of clicked and made sense. Right. I, I adore fashion. I always have. I love putting outfits together. I was the kind of person that would go on Pinterest and pick out random bits of clothing that would work together, stylize things. I always loved it. And it ran in the family. My, my Nana is a seamstress. Oh. So it was one of those things that it just kind of fell into place. And I was like, yeah, do you know, why am, why am I not doing sewing? Why am I not putting my designs out there and making them into products that people can use and love, you know? So, from there, I suppose, I decided I was going to develop myself and make myself a, a brand, do my own work and put myself out there, which was quite scary, but I just went, sure, it's good, why not? <laughs> so did you have to start again from, uh, you continued from uh, uh, communication straight on to fashion, right? <laughs> Actually, I stayed in communication design. Um, yes. So I stayed in communication design and I said to the lecturers, I was like, I'm going to do pattern design, but I want to be able to apply my designs on products that I want to sew, I want to make. And because communication design is such a broad course, it covers basically anything. They know that mm -hmm. when you're going into it, you're probably going to diverse into something else. So yeah. I was quite lucky in the sense that I didn't have to jump from communication design to textiles. I didn't actually have previous experience in textiles as such. So I'm completely self-taught in that sense that I had to go ahead and teach myself everything from scratch. <laughs> wow, sounds good. So you are not, you don't attend um, fashion design classes, do you? No, no, I don't. <laughs> That's amazing. The fact that you can actually use your communication design to mm -hmm. do what you do is great. It's something I, I, I've always been one to throw myself into other things. I've always said people shouldn't just limit their skills to one thing. If you can draw, that's great, but find other things you can apply it with. If you can paint, don't just paint a picture. See where else you can use those skills. Exactly. Because they can be used for anything. I never just sat and did drawing. You know, I always went out and went, cool, let's find other workshops, other things I could do. Book binding. Let's do it. Why not? You never know when it might come in handy. <laughs> exactly. So what do you design? So I design a range of uh, accessories, but my accessories are all about being sustainable, eco-friendly, all about trying to promote a uh, circular economy. Right. So I try to use organic materials 
in everything I use. So I get organic cotton, mm-hmm. silk, uh, organic cork, which is, um, it's got like a leather feel to it, but it's completely right. organic. Um, mm-hmm. And even when it comes to the linings of products, so like I make bags. So when it comes to bags, I like to try and line them. And instead of buying fabric for that, I get donations of fabric so that it then reduces waste and reduces the pollution that fashion textiles has a tendency to cause. As fashion, ten- as fashion tends to have quite a damaging um, output to the world, I try to sort of hopefully reduce that in the things that I make. And I make a range of things from like headbands, scarf, bag, um, various other things like purses. I really try to expand myself. I mostly stick to accessories rather than clothing. Um, just because with accessories, I've just always had more of a passion for that. Like you won't see me go anywhere without a bag or a scarf. I'm wearing one now. Like <laughs> I go everywhere with my accessories. I just I wear them 24 seven all the time. So it's something I've always been super passionate about that I've, and I've said for years, I wanted to design my own scarf. Mm -hmm. I just never went out and did it. (laughs) Right. So the scarf, is that one of yours? This one isn't. I'm, I'm saving my good ones for the fashion show. (laughs) I'm really, I'm really like, I've been, I've been, I've been up in the game here. I'm like really excited to launch these like beautiful scarves. And I've been sitting there and I'm like, oh, I really want to tease people and show them what I'm doing. But I'm also like, well, we're doing this fashion show. I, I'm really excited to throw out some, you know, let's start some nice ones so mm-hmm. people can go, wow, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see because I've seen a few uh, photos on Instagram of what you've done. Yeah, I just love them. I love them totally. Yeah. So if you are saving, uh, you know, photos or, you know, you're saving your your collection for the fashion week, I'm just thrilled and I can't wait to see because obviously I'm starting now to imagine how good they are going to be. Yes, I am so excited. I, I'm really, there's a few new bags that I'm going to be putting out on this fashion show and I am just... I am so excited. (laughs) So what type of bags do you make? I am diversing into a lot of different styles at the moment. So I originally started with tote bags. I think it's just tote bags are a nice, easy sort of place to start. A lot of people love them. But I'm doing, my favorites at the moment are the crossbody bags. Like they're quite small little satchels. Right. Um, I try to avoid zips where possible unless I'm reusing zips just because zips aren't eco-friendly. Exactly. I, for the satchels, I end up having a fold over with like a, a wooden button, so it's a nice wooden oh, button yeah. closure. Mm-hmm. Um, it means that it has more space in it as well. You can open it up and you've got extra space before folding it down. So it's a really nice little fold over cross body bag. Mm-hmm. I also found a technique where you can turn it into a backpack. So there was just like... <laughs> Amazing. Um, and I'm doing a bucket bag at the moment, which is going to be like a really nice big... It's, it's a lot bigger than all my other bags that I've made. It could be a bigger bag just to show a bit of size and, you know, functionality. People like a lot of space in their bags. So, <laughs> Right. Going to back to what you said before, somebody contributes this to you. You get yeah. the, the materials as donation. Who is that who is donating materials so to you? I, I go to local charities um, and I see, I basically see the stuff that they can sell or they can't pass on. And I take them and I I cut them up and I use them because there's nothing worse. You know, if if a charity shop can't sell clothing, Mm -hmm. if I I think it was 75% of of clothing from charity shops ends up going to landfill anyway, Mm -hmm. which is horrific when you think about that. You know, we we donate these clothes, you know, these clothes hoping that we're doing better only to find out that 75% of it's just going to landfill. That's true. Which is just as bad. (laughs) unfortunately so, yes so okay so Thanks. I really try to go out and you know recycle and upcycle sometimes I get donations from you know different people that are giving away things and give them a big wash and re, you know make sure they're suitable and able to be moved on and um, I make sure they go through a whole QC process before anything anyway just because we have to be pretty pristine before yes. we can move on 
So everything goes through a big QC process, a big clean, a big check to make sure it's actually suitable to go for uh, go forward. If not, um, it doesn't mean it doesn't get reused. I tend to reuse it for my own self projects around the house. So <laughs> sounds good. So do you make dresses too, or is it just accessories? It's just accessories just now. Um, I've been asked about dresses before and clothing, especially because I literally live in dresses. <laughs> um, I think it's something I'd probably do in future or try in the future. The problem I have is making clothing in sustainable fabrics that aren't going to be too harsh to the skin. Yes, of so, course. Uh, because I'm specifically all about the, you know, organic fabrics. Mm -hmm. I'm printing my designs onto linen is a great idea, but it's finding a place that can do it just at the moment. Because at the moment, I only have one company that sources my uh, material. Right. And the people that source my material only have certain amounts of organic fabrics. So right. they're, they're quite thick. A lot of the ones I use still could be used, but then... You know, it's looking at whether people are going to want to wear a silk dress. <laughs> well, 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 this is it. Yeah. You know, some people out there might be delighted to wear a silk dress, you know, wearing the finest. But I also have to consider functionality here. Are people going to want to wear a silk dress? Well, silk dresses are not your everyday dress unless, I don't know. I don't know who could wear that. <laughs> Most people are happy with cotton, to be honest. Yes, precisely. The, the problem I've got is, you know, is finding things that could do. I mean, I could go for plain cotton, but cotton is one of the highest um, environmental dam environmentally damaging products the amount, due to the amount of water that they use mm -hmm. just to make cotton. So finding an organic way of producing that, like I use organic cotton, but mm -hmm. it's organic cotton canvas, which is quite a stiff fabric. You couldn't wear it physically on your body without it being too rough. It's mostly used for my bags because it's a lot sturdy. Um, a lot more sturdy to wear so mm. it's finding an in-between balance I think that's been my main struggle at the moment is just finding fabrics on you know gonna <laughs> cause like discomfort right wow sounds interesting what you're saying is really um, important here because uh, we want to keep the climate safe for everyone especially for the you know the future generation Yes. So we need to be careful, isn't it? We do. Wow, sounds uh, <laughs> exciting. So where do you uh, come from? Uh, so I'm actually from England. Um, I'm from Yorkshire specifically, uh, but I moved to Scotland 10, 11 years ago, maybe. Right, wow. It's been a while, it's been a while. I've been here a long time. <laughs> okay. Interesting. I was going to ask you how you're finding, uh, you know, I went to school in Yorkshire, in Leeds. Yeah. So I was going to ask you how you're finding the difference between the two places, but you've been here for a long time, just like myself. So I want to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow. Interesting. So going to ask you a question which is going to be a bit strange but how are you uh, preparing for the fashion week how am i preparing for the fashion week yes yeah. so I, I have had <laughs> unbelievable amounts of fabric being delivered to my house it's unbelievable <laughs> i have a little studio in my own home at the moment that i work with um that's been I, you can't see my desk <laughs> if I'm honest with you, my desk is packed with fabric. I think I had my poor, my poor fiance. He came over and was like, "Your desk? There is no desk." Um, it's quite busy. I've had to find models, which I found a couple of models now. So I've got, I've got a couple who are willing to do some nice outdoor, socially distanced um, shoots with me, which will be absolutely fantastic. Because I, I just wanted to get some really nice, organic, urban shots that would really show my work in the best possible way um, they're quite brightly colored they've got quite flowy fabrics so it's it's quite exciting that I'm organizing these like photo shoots for this it's um with all the, with my little stack of products sort of ready to go it's quite exciting wow. it's nerve-wracking all the same but <laughs> 
Sounds uh, interesting, sounds exciting. And I'm so happy because uh, right now getting models is quite complicated. It, so, yeah, mm -hmm. it was, I was, I was stressing a little bit. Um, I put a call out originally to uh, a few uni people. Mm -hmm. I have a class of 60 people and not a single one was able to help <laughs> or was willing to help, um, which made me stress quite a bit because I thought, oh my goodness, no one's, you know, I mean, we are coming to the end of our year. So a lot of people are probably stressing about doing the work. Mm -hmm. But I was just so stressed about the idea of having to do these products and this photo shoot without a model. Um, yes, of course. I was thinking I was maybe having to find a different way of taking photos, but I really want to look at doing lifestyle photo yeah. shots, you know, maybe get a bit of movement in them. You mm -hmm. know, it's the best possible way to see a product. Seeing it on its own isn't quite the same as seeing it on a person. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's true. So I've seen that uh, some of your pieces, I don't know what you're going to showcase, but they are very flowery. Yes. Yeah. So it will be nice to get them out there, especially now that it's a spring. Yes. It's going to look amazing. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, a lot of my designs are floral and botanical inspired. Mm -hmm. um, I do tend to do animals, but I think for my pattern designs, mostly it does just tend to be flower designs. I think it's just, I seem to be drawn to them. I, I, I absolutely love drawing them. <laughs> right. So you sketch too? Yes, of course you do. <laughs> what a <laughs> <Yes>. question. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's I'll fine. Have a moment there. <laughs> a lot of people tend to forget that I, I put a lot of work into the things I do. And mm. I'm really passionate about what I do. I hand draw everything i yeah. hand draw the flowers i hand draw the designs i paint them with watercolors i then transfer them onto a digital file make them through this digital software to then be printed onto fabric and then sew them into things myself <laughs> wow that sounds amazing that sounds like uh, great work difficult work is it difficult to do that it's difficult but um, not in the way you'd think. It's difficult because a lot of people don't understand or appreciate the work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that I'm just buying fabric and making things. And it's mm -hmm. the fact that I'm putting my effort into designing these, sewing them, painting them. Like it, there is a big process and it's trying to convey this process that it isn't just as simple as I'm mm -hmm. you know, cutting up some templates and, st and stitching up these bags. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have to spend several hours trying to plan a layout, trying to plan, you know, what flowers are going to work, what colours are going to work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't. <laughs> I could spend yeah. hours trying to do a pattern and it might not even work. <laughs> wow. That, uh, that sounds uh, interesting. So as you were saying before, uh, you get to get these um, materials from uh, uh, charity shops. Is it like maybe dresses that have been worn? Are they going to look new or do you do something to make them look? So um, it's, it, is, it is like, so, you know, like dresses, tops, kinds of things like that. Um, but because I only use those fabrics for the linings of bags. All oh, right. It's not, okay. it's not a massive outer piece that's going to be shown. It's making a reuse of something that, Otherwise, people wouldn't notice. Right. If that makes sense. You know, a lot of people kind of, they forget about a lining in a bag. You know, mm -hmm. they just see it as it being there. But when you're designing things and sewing things, it's something you have to consider. You have to put together a lining. And rather than me going out and buying roll for roll fabric that's going to cost a fortune, but also damage the environment because I'm having to buy loads of fabric in. Yes, of course. It's, it makes sense to reuse the fabric that, essentially nobody's wanting anymore that's true you that's know if, because if I can repurpose this fabric to something that beautiful that people love mm -hmm. it's then got a new life that I've given it exactly that's amazing so how much does a bag or a headpiece go for because you do a lot of work to get this done it's it is quite a lot um but I like to think of myself as reasonably priced when I compare myself to my competitors right so if I was to go for um let's say a silk headband 
-hmm. and an organic cotton headband. Mm -hmm. Now the organic cotton headband actually works out cheaper just because material wise silk is a luxury fabric. Yes. So if I was to actually price them, they're actually pretty reasonably priced. The organic cotton ones, for example, they go for 15. Right. The silk okay. ones go for 22. Not bad at all. So it's not actually too bad when, oh, you know, when you consider the work that goes into them, it's not actually too bad. Um, I know my family are very much, they like cheap things. So when I told them the prices of my stuff, they nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> Right. Well, everybody has different uh, ways of how they want to shop. But I think your your prices are very reasonable. Yeah, I've and, always uh, kept them. My aim was to try and keep them as reasonable as I possibly could mm -hmm. without undercutting myself, making sure that my time was taken into account, but also making sure that people could shop small if they really wanted to. Understanding that shopping small is likely more expensive. Mm -hmm. But for quality, you know, my my scarves, they come in at 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my competitors would charge upwards of 100. Mm -hmm. You know, I tried to keep it quite reasonable that you can get a luxury 100% silk scarf and it's custom as well. Mm -hmm. People get to choose the exact pattern that they want. Wow. So they get to choose the pattern out of the selection I provide, the pattern mm -hmm. that they would like for it to be custom made for them. Mm -hmm. So... When you think of that way and the fact it is a 60 pound scarf, it actually makes sense and it actually makes it a really reasonable product, you know, that's packaged in eco-friendly packaging. It's got really nice, you know, branding. I just got new branding. I'm really chuffed with it. <laughs> right. I hear you. Now, there's something that really bothers most of us uh, designers, actually. Mm -hmm. When you make your, uh, whatever you make, you know, Mm -hmm. the accessories or dresses here in the UK. Yep. The work you put into it is a lot. Yeah. The material you use, everything is just too much. And then when you go to sell, somebody might actually prefer to buy something from Asia, which is oh. cheaper. Yes. You know, without knowing how much, because some people will say, oh, that's so expensive. But most of the times you don't actually even, you know, um, charge for your manpower you yeah. don't charge for your labor you know people don't understand this so what you are saying really about what you do to get that bag personally i think you should charge more <laughs> but, but you know um it all depends on who your clients are who your yeah. customers are because if you get people who actually appreciate that what you're doing is really difficult, mm -hmm. even explaining itself just sounds like <laughs> it does sound, language, really. it, it sounds like a lot, but it's like a lot of things. Like I said, a lot of people don't realize what goes into it. I had it on my website recently, you know, the whole process that I do and the story about behind Jade Elizabeth. And a lot of people were messaging me afterwards, like, oh, I didn't realize you you hand draw your things. And I was like, I've been saying this for such a long time. I post it and I say it quite a bit, but obviously not enough for people to realize that actually, yes, it's fabric, but every piece of fabric is designed, you know? It's gonna be designed by someone. You don't just magically have fabric. <laughs> exactly, this is it. Well, most people don't understand, to be honest, because especially now with the everybody wanting organic uh, materials, everything, you know, because of the environment. Yeah. People don't understand how much work and effort goes there. Yeah, to, I think- To get uh, safe environment. It's, it's a lot and buying out um, organic materials mm -hmm. is more expensive. You know, I would love to just be able to buy the cheaper fabric and just design that and, you know, do it that way. But then I'm part of the problem. And I don't want to be part of the problem. I want to be someone that tries to help reduce it. Okay. I want to be someone that can, no, I'm not going to, one person doesn't always make a difference, mm -hmm. but I can help with a little bit of change. I can influence other people to help change the ways that they shop. You know, I can inspire people to change the way that they shop. I'm not going to be able to change the world. I'm not going to be able to instantly, miraculously stop all fast fashion but I can help people to understand the damage that it does. And I can help people to go, oh, actually, I'll shop locally. 
and that's what I hope I can do. Wow, I couldn't have said any better than what you've said. <laughs> Dropping logo can be really uh, the best way forward, really, because most of the designers now. I'm not saying that even international, especially it's the mass market, which is spoiling everything. But when a fashion designer, <clears throat> pardon me, a fashion designer gets to make something, somebody who really thinks about people. Yeah. They are going to make something which is actually really nice for the environment, for themselves. Yeah. And that's something local always. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds great. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Especially because you're graduating. I know. <laughs> wow. I would love to have be able to run my business full time, have my own studio mm-hmm. and just be able to do what I love. I'm not able to do it full time just now. Um, I mean, I'm graduating. So mm-hmm. it's it's getting yourself out there, really. But I'd love to be able to, you know, I'm I'm dying for markets like physical craft markets just to have those again be able to get myself out there show my work and I just want to be able to you know live a life of doing the things that I love and I know that sounds really simple and I know that sounds really like oh well you know that that seems pretty simple to do but it isn't (laughs) it's not as easy as people think it would be you know I I I've pushed myself over the past few years and I'm constantly getting better I'm constantly, I've gotten further now and I'm still getting there. So in five years time, I would like to be able to see myself designing, you know, really high end bags, maybe even dresses because Mm -hmm. I love dresses. I do love it. (laughs) Love to be able to do look at clothing, love to be able to look at more accessories and be able to do, you know, lots of different styles of scarves and heck, let's do ties as well, you know? Let's go and do some ties and bow ties because weddings, you know, let's let's get out there and experiment and just do these things that I want to do. <laughs> and it sounds so like out there. Wow. So you, uh, uh, this, uh, your bags, your accessories, do you uh, stitch them by hand or do you actually use machines for that? So I use a, mach- a machine. Gosh, could you imagine hand stitching? <laughs> I know, it can be complicated. Uh, no, I definitely use a machine. Um, I, I Yeah, I use a machine. It's a singer that I use. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's honestly, I was using, when I first started, I was using quite a, a cheap, different machine. I actually don't know the brand, but my Nana, um, being a seamstress herself, said to me, she went, you're doing what I love and she can't sew anymore because of her health condition so she actually suffers from MS and wasn't able to continue sewing and doing the things that she absolutely loved and she was an amazing seamstress Mm -hmm. so I felt almost the need to be able to continue that for her and she Mm -hmm. bought me a Singer sewing machine and she went you can continue this you know do it you know you can pursue your dreams stick at it and when things get tough just put it aside take a break and come back to it it will be okay take your time and she's been right like I, I, sometimes you know I can have the sewing machine out and things just don't work but I found that in this case like she's really helped me push forward and even when I doubt myself I know that you know she's there sitting there you know she might not be with me right now but she's there going yeah do it you can do it nice so yeah machine is what you asked it's a machine (laughs) that's nice yeah I was wondering if you are doing by you know you first of all cut the patterns and then you start sewing by hand it's going to be so complicated yeah I'd have to be charging a fortune if I was doing it that way (laughs) thank you well, you couldn't actually, because if you want to go on and make more by hand, we'll be taking you six months to complete a bag, probably. Yeah, it would be ridiculous. <laughs> wow. So um, if people, uh, before that, do you have any advice you can give anyone wanting to be a fashion designer or, you know, want to, to venture into that? 
one thing I was told, and I was told in uni a while ago, <laughs> it's going to sound really horrible because I was really taken aback by it. And that thing was everything has been done. Mm -hmm. And even though everything has been done, that doesn't mean you can't do it. You can always go and do it. You can just put your own take on it, take it in your own way, try something new, twist it, you know, because you end up making your own thing that you love. Mm -hmm. I would say to people that are, that are starting out to just throw yourself into it and don't care what other people think. Exactly. Thank Not you. right now. You know, yeah. I spent years trying to do things and I hear it from my friends who are graduating all the time. They're too scared to post their work, too oh. scared to showcase what they're doing. And you can't be. If you're a designer, you can't be scared. Don't That's be nice. scared of criticism of people looking because that criticism is what's going to help you move forward and progress. If exactly. you don't have that criticism, you'll never get anywhere. Exactly. We came to uni to be criticized, to move forward, to improve our skills. So for any fashion designers that are wanting to be there and, to wanting, to, and wanting to get there, take criticism, enjoy it, make mistakes, because if you don't make mistakes, you'll never learn. Let's and do this, of course. Yeah, and throw yourself into it. Don't yes. be afraid to do it because I was afraid for ages and I wish I had done it sooner. I wish that I spent four years going, should I make a scarf? Should I do some sewing? And I only started like a couple of years ago, but I spent years asking myself, should I do it? I don't know if I should do it. Yes, I <laughs> and know I had, exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And I had people saying to me, nobody will buy it. You know, I had, I, there was a point my family said to me, my family, um, be careful what you make and what you charge because people will just go to Primark. Why would they buy that product for, you know, let's say 85 pound when they can go to Primark and get it for two pound. And that- So many things that are that, wrong with that. Yeah, <laughs> that put me off for a really long time and it shouldn't have. So for people that are starting out, people are gonna say things that you're gonna go, oh God, maybe you're right, but do it anyway. It is, it is a jump, it is scary. But unless you do it, you're not going to know. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Wow. That is just so right. <laughs> so right. And you talking about Primark, I don't know if we should be talking about it. But most of the materials, most of the things that are sold in Primark actually are not good for the environment. No, they're not. And, and the fact that most of the people making them could be kids. It's... I, what upsets me is that, you know, these people, I think this was a, there was a, oh, was it boohoo.com, I think, that mm -hmm. did it? Mm -hmm. Or no, it might have been Pretty Little Thing, online store. It, it was around about Black Friday, and I posted about this on my story a while ago, and they did something similar. They were doing a big sale where they were basically giving away tops and dresses, coats for seven pence, okay? And I sat there, and I was like, okay, let's think about this logically. What are the people who are making this getting paid? Where's their fair wages? Where does this come into it? You know, we buy these products and a lot of people go, oh my God, sale, yes, I'm, I'm going to spend loads. I could get a dress for 7p, but people don't consider that someone out there has made that on nothing. They're getting no, no health care. They've got nothing out there. They're getting barely any wages. They're making these ridiculous things at stupid costs. And we're getting you know, we're paying nothing for it. And we don't, a lot of people don't even consider others out there that are making it. This is it. It's quite heartbreaking, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the thing that I always try to say to people that Primark and other places like this do tend to know, you know, do tend to do this. A lot of people know about fast fashion. A lot of people know that people aren't getting paid fair wages. Mm -hmm. So if they already know it, it's just changing that concept of... Mm -hmm. You know about it, but can we do better? Exactly. Can we change it? You know, there are alternatives. Let's try and change it. Right. That's true. Wow. This has been really captivating interview because <laughs> I have never talked about this, uh, uh, you know, 
topic and the fact that you brought it up is so important because so many people are lost. They want yeah. cheap things. They don't know how much effect they have on people, environment, I kids. think it's, it's so important. Fashion in itself is the second most polluting industry. Exactly. So as fashion designers, we need to consider what impact we have and what changes we can make. We are the change. The younger people, the new people, the new designers, we are the difference. That's and if we can all just do a little thing, start with eco-friendly packaging, mm -hmm. something so simple, but, you know, a lot of places don't do it. Boohoo still send their clothing in plastic bags. You know, we, if we think about little things like that, it makes a difference. And as fashion designers, I think it's important to consider it. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. So if people want to get in touch, see your pieces, how can they find you on social media or on your website? Can you give us your links to that? If you can tell us mm -hmm. what they are. So on Instagram, I am Jade Illustration. Um, it's Jade with like a, an underscore and then illustration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty easy uh, to find my pictures like super bright and colorful. It's fabric. Facebook, it's Jade Elizabeth Designs. Dead simple, same picture, bright, colorful pattern designs. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually find my website as well. Uh, that's jadeelizabethdesigns.co.uk. <laughs> so it's pretty, it's pretty samey. Um, you can contact me on either of those as well. So, you know, questions, um, you know, you're curious about the way I work, you want help with coming forward with design concepts, you want to work together on a collaborative piece, throw it out there. <laughs> Good. So viewers, um, Instagram is jade underscore illustrations. Facebook is Jade Elizabeth Designs. Designs. And the website is jadeelizabeth.co.uk. You Jade can do Elizabeth. that. Jadeelizabethdesigns.co.uk. Yeah. Sorry about that. Jadeelizabethdesigns.co.uk. Yeah. Right. Wow. This has been the most amazing interview I've done in a long time. So thank you so much. No problem. That we covered all the big topics. Got to get them in there. Got to get them in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I'm looking forward to seeing you and your collection uh, from 28th, obviously, because we have the meet and greet and then 29th and uh, uh, 30th to see your collection. Yes, I'm excited. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. <laughs> oh, no, don't be nervous. Be excited. Yep. Oh, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And please stay safe, stay happy, and see you on uh, 28th. See you then. Thank you so much.